Hey guys, good morning. It's Friday and we are going to talk a little bit more about toxicology. Um, it's a hat kind of morning, so that's okay. You guys are probably in your PJs. I said good morning, but apparently some of you were sleeping till two o'clock in the afternoon, which is not okay. Um, I'm just teasing. So thank you to those of you who actually tuned into the Zoom meeting on Wednesday afternoon. Apparently you guys were unaware of it, many of you, which means you didn't get up Wednesday before 2 a.m. and look at your forensics uh, classroom because I had posted it in the classroom on the main stream and I mentioned it in the instructional video. So those of you who did not, did not know about it, <laughs> maybe you should get up before two and do something. Um, really though, for your mental health, it's not a good idea for you guys to be staying up all night and sleeping all day. Like you really need to get up and get on a regular routine. This is going to be going on for at least another month. And it's just really not good for your health to be doing that. I'm just, I mean, sorry, the mom and me is lecturing you, but, um, I, I am just worried. You can't keep going on like, like this. It's not going to be good for you. Get up, get out, get some sunshine, um, you know, be around people, get your things done, enjoy your family. Um, those are just my very strong suggestions. So, um, so we're going to talk a little bit more today about some of the um, uh, topics under toxicology. This is what we would be talking about if you were in class. Um, not going to do as many slides today. Um, you do need to jot just a couple things down. After this video, you should be able to answer question 10 and 11. I know I technically assigned only questions one through 10, but the more natural cutoff for today is gonna to be at question 11. So you might wanna go ahead and do that. If not, you can fill it out next week, but then you may have to come back and try to find your notes. So um, <clears throat> hopefully you are taking some notes. All right, so we left off yesterday, the lot, not yesterday, Wednesday, we had talked about lethal gases uh, and injections. And so pesticides and herbicides, you don't have to jot any of this down. Um, I didn't list it as a question on the homework. I tried to really just skim the material this time and make it simplify it since we're not doing this in person. But just being aware that you will hear cases could be some of the forensic files, could be um, cases you um, have read about where people will use pesticides and herbicides because they are poisons. So examples of um, herbicides basically are things that uh, are used within um, the gardening world, I guess, um, for treating weeds. Okay, they're made to kill and pesticides are for, you know, treating pests, bugs, rodents, what have you. So they're made to kill and people know that. And if you can't get your hands on like <clears throat> actual, you know, poisons like, why am I drawing a blank? cyanide right or things like that they all uh, people can go to the store and buy large quantities of like um rat killer what was the um was i watching a case did i have you guys watch a case oh, i'm getting all my cases messed up no it was the forensic files case yeah where the guy was going and buying all the rat poison right oh my gosh i've watched so many cases now anyway um, if you can't get your hands on like, you know, something from a chemical or from, from a lab, then people know that they can use different kind of pesticides. So just, you know, it can lead to death. Your, your dog can get into it. Your cats can get into it. Your kids can get into it if it's in your backyard. Um, but also, you know, in large doses, it can be troublesome. So just being aware that that is something else that's on the radar. So then the next topic here is organic toxins. And I believe this is uh, question number 10, um, yeah, it's like organic toxins in two examples. So organic toxins, if you think about organic think naturally, they're toxins that are naturally made in nature, okay? God created. Um, so they're produced by a living organism, plant or animal. So obviously snake venom is, is an organic toxin. It's produced by living creatures, snakes. Um, plants, there's um, ricin, which came up on Wednesday when we were talking about the the case with the guy that got stabbed with the ricin pellet or the pellet that had ricin in it, that actually comes from the castor bean plant, which I mentioned on Wednesday. So it's coming from a plant and they can actually pull this poison out of, once they process the beans, it's actually like a, a byproduct of um, after they, whatever it is they do to the castor beans. 
So it produces a very deadly toxin. So some of them are just completely natural, not made in a lab. Um, they're just things in nature that can kill you. So these are just two examples, rattlesnake venom and ricin, which is made from castor beans or the, from, from the production of castor beans or processing, I guess would be the better word. Um, so they're usually either absorbed through your skin, like when the snake bites you, or um, if you ingest it, or with the nest, the example of the rice and pellet, obviously it also went through their skin. So this is just another, I, I, I probably repeat this case multiple times because it just keeps coming up. And I know we talked about this on Wednesday and it is one of the case studies, which I forget what question number that is, but I, I would go ahead and answer that now since we've talked about this case study a couple times, it's on page 295, the death of George Markov and the attack on Vladimir Kostov. So the interesting thing about it is George Markov died. I think I have the dates wrong because at Kostov actually, it's the same year. Hmm. Okay, I might've had a typo there, my bad. But Vladimir, I'm pointing at the screen as if you guys can see what I'm pointing at, sorry. But well, I can use my pointer. So Vladimir Kostov here, he was actually attacked first, but he's the guy whose clothing was so thick that he didn't die. He just got sick. And then when George Markov, he was a Russian spy who defected, um, he was actually stabbed. He's the one that was stabbed with the tip of the umbrella needle that had a tiny little pellet in it that they had put ricin in. He died. And when he died from it, they were like, wait a minute, this guy's also a spy and he's sick. And they kind of searched and they basically found the pellet in Vladimir and they were able to like remove it. So he was, a, but luckily it hadn't gone very far. So it's kind of an interesting case. You can read up on it on page 295 and then answer the question. I forget which number it is. You'll have to just look. So um, that should take care of number 10 for you guys and one of the case studies. So then drugs and crime, this isn't one of the questions. It's just kind of a like, okay, we've talked about all of this, uh, these poisons and toxins and um how does all of this relate to um, what we see today as far as cases in drugs and crime? Well, most drugs are produced to treat an illness or reduce pain, okay? Most, okay? But there are some that have no medical use at all. Obviously, the abuse of legal, like prescription pain pills and illegal drugs is a problem in our country and the world, right? So it's led to um, just really costly um it, it, it's a very costly problem as far as deaths and crime and people's health and all those things. So it's, 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 it's a big impact on our economy and the world economy. Um, so just, I mean, it's stuff, you know, um, this is an interesting fact. Um, almost half the individuals in federal prison are there because of drug related offenses, almost half at least here in the United States. And so drug-related offenses, anything from possession of it, like being found in possession of illegal drugs or selling illegal drugs, um, drug using lifestyle, it tends to lead to illegal activities. Like people want more drugs, so they rob or steal. Well, I guess that's the same thing, <laughs> break in, robberies. Um, my brother-in-law was addicted to, I think he was addicted to crack. I forget. It's been several years ago. It's been over 20 years ago. And my sister was still married to him at the time and they had a little baby and he was just um, taking cash out of their checking account. And then my sister would try to not put her paycheck in the checking account. She would just cash it and hide cash and she he would find the cash. Then she got to where she couldn't pay the bills. Um, he pawned off like um, she had just had a baby. And a lot of times when you're pregnant, your hands swell and women can't wear their wedding rings. So she hadn't been wearing her engagement ring because the baby was still young and you're, you know, it's just, you have to wait till you lose weight sometimes, just FYI ladies, before you can put your rings back on. And so he pawned her engagement ring. Um, he, he just started pawning all these things around the house once she started keeping the money away from him. So it just led to a lot of illegal activities. He eventually started, he had the same name as his dad, um, and he eventually started stealing checks from his dad and forging his dad's name and writing hot checks. And all of that led to him being arrested. So it was drug related and it leads to illegal activity. So I can tell you all kinds of stories. Um, and I know I usually tell you these stories in class. So um, that was just my brother-in-law, my sister's first husband. Um, he eventually did die of an overdose. They 
Um, actually, it was last fall. They found him. He was missing. Days. They couldn't find him. Oh, sorry. My sixth graders are posting things on Padlet. I'm getting notifications. Um, last fall, they found he wasn't missing for a few days, and they found him on the side of a road, just dead in his truck. He had been it, it turned out to be an overdose. They think it was accidental because I think he'd been driving and he started feeling chest pain, whatever it was he had taken, brought on a heart attack. And he pulled over on the side of the road, died and sat dead in his truck for like three days before it was found because he was kind of out in the middle of nowhere. So crazy stuff. Um, and well, the last part, drug use can contributes to try crime, obviously, because um, people are addicted, they're dependent and then commit crimes to do it. Or when you're on drugs, you're kind of out of your mind and you're not thinking right and you will commit crimes. You know, we've heard stories, I think it was like a year or two ago. I don't know if y'all remember this story, but it was here in Arlington and there was a young man who had like broken into a car dealership and um, the police arrived and apparently he was standing on some of the cars and yelling and acting crazy and he ended up getting shot and killed. And then I think, um, he was, uh, the police were sued by the family because they were like, they didn't have to kill him, but the guy was acting crazy. And so it doesn't give him the right, the police the right to kill him. But unfortunately these things happen. People are super high or think on drugs and they do crazy things. So all this stuff, you know, about, and I wish we were in class to discuss it because I'd love to hear y'all's feedback and any, you know, people, you know, or experiences or things you've heard about. These are, um, these would be great discussions. Um, so this other thing, the way, basically the way drugs are organized are on these, this, this schedule, the way the United States, the FDA, um, uh, classifies drugs. Okay. And you don't have to memorize each level of the schedule, but you do have to know, and this is going to be question 11. We're going to talk about the difference between illegal and legal drugs. Schedule one on this five schedule, schedule one is illegal drugs. So you might jot that down. Okay, schedules two, three, four, and five are all legal drugs. So you do need to just know, that's the only thing you really need to know about the, the breaking down the schedule. Schedule one is illegal drugs, and I'll break it down on some more slides here. Schedule two, three, four, and five are legal. So schedule one, the reason it's considered illegal, no medical use at all. Very high potential for abuse. It's things like heroin, LSD. Those are things that are very addictive. There is no medical use for them. They've literally just been created for highs. Um, so that's the worst. It's the only one on this schedule that's considered illegal. Then when you get to schedule two, they are legal, but they are controlled because they are very high potential for abuse and addiction. So you have to get a prescription for them and it's really hard to get a refill. Different, like oxycodone is probably the one that you're gonna, uh, hear the most that people get addicted to the pain pill oxycodone methadone methamphetamine different kinds of methamphetamines and cocaine has even had some medical use so these are very highly regulated within the medical community you can't just go get it without prescriptions they're not going to easily write refills unless they're somebody who's doing it illegally <laughs> um so that's but it they are legal when prescribed by a doctor um schedule three does have accepted medical use um, these are things like steroids, you know, lots of people use them for like asthma or any kinds of inflammations because they can reduce inflammation. Um, but they've been super abused within the whole, um, you know, weightlifting community and things like that. And we'll talk about each of these, um, a little bit more next week and break it down in more detail. Uh, they have accepted medical use, moderate potential for abuse, um, and, um, addiction. Then schedule four. Um, low potential for abuse, but there are risks of addiction and dependency. Like I, my, my aunt, my mother's sister is for a while there was pretty dependent on sleeping pills. So I finally had to get her off that because she was starting to do some loopy things. I think her husband found her one time at two or three in the morning in the kitchen on the floor and she had taken all the pots and pans out of the uh, cabinets and they were sitting all over the floor and he's like what are you doing and she's like I'm organizing all the pots and pans and, and she was taking sleeping pills <laughs> but she was awake in the middle of the night doing crazy things so there's still some dangers with that um, they're safe to use if you don't use them abuse that and then schedule five are things just like Tylenol over the counter you know uh, Tylenol it says Robitussin um, 
um, they're, uh, well, actually, I'm sorry. Usually these are, some of these can be prescription as well, like Tylenol with codeine, codeine, but it's also includes like your over the counter things that are just taken. They're pretty much don't usually get addicted to them and they're safer. So, um, so again, here's how that breaks down. Schedule one is illegal. No current accepted medical use is what you need to remember why they're considered illegal. And so then under the category of, this is question number, I think 11, and I'm going to end on that one today, even though I know I put 10 as the homework, but I wanted to finish talking about the schedule drugs today. Um, illegal drugs have no current medical use. So examples, sorry, my sixth graders are, they're up doing their work. I'm <laughs> just teasing. Um, uh, I'm losing my brain. It was train of thought. Some examples of illegal drugs are hallucinogens, no medical use, people just taken for hallucinogen, I mean, to hallucinate. Um, but they, they actually can create flashbacks. Um, and I'll give you another example of my family. I'm telling you, I can tell you all kinds of stories. My niece, who is now 30. Oh my gosh, she is. She just turned 30. Wow, I'm old. Anyway, her, she graduated high school early, went off to college at 17. Her, my older sister and uh, my niece's father were not great parents. And so my, my sweet niece at 17 was pretty much on her own away at college and got really fell very heavily into drug use. And by 19, by two years, within a year or two of her being at college, maybe it was a year and a half, she was doing so many drugs and doing so many hallucinogens that she was so whacked out of her mind. Um, they were found her wandering around campus, talking to statues and some crazy stuff. My sister who had moved to Canada had had to come in from Canada. My, my other younger sister and my mom, they all had to drive to where she was at college and like unenroll un her from college in the middle of, might've been her second semester, second or third semester of college. And she was like out of her mind for about a month. Like there's about a month in her life that now she will tell you at the age of 30 that she doesn't really remember. It's like a fog and she was mean and she was hateful and just nasty and blaming everybody for ruining her life and taking her out of college. I mean, it was bad. It was really, really bad. Y'all don't mess around with this stuff. Um, she's fine now, but it's been, you know, she was, I think 19 and she's 30 now. No, she might've been 18. So at least 12 years ago. But she will tell you, like, because people might, her older sister will bring it up and she'll say, I, I've, have, I've apologized. I, I don't remember all the horrible things I said. I'm so sorry. I was literally out of my mind for about a month. So just this guy, guys, this, I wish we were there in person to talk about this chapter because maybe on our Zoom call next week, I can get some of y'all's feedback about this because this is some serious stuff. This, this chapter probably could potentially affect you more than any other of the chapters we've talked about. Um, you're going to know people who have been involved in drug use. You're going to see people involved in drug use if you go off to college. And I hope and pray you don't get involved in drug use, but this is serious stuff. I, I have so many people in my life I could tell you about that have been affected by it and it's terrible. Please, please don't do these. Just don't, just don't. Um, I could go on and on with the stories, but this video will get too long. Um, so a hallucinogen is one of them. Heroin's another illegal drug. Um, that was the Corey uh, Monteith, that opening case study, the guy from Glee, alcohol and heroin. Um, it killed him, right? Very, 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 very addictive. Oh my goodness. <laughs> okay. And then, so here's some more, um, Idea. Now, interestingly enough, marijuana is still listed as an illegal drug because it is illegal under federal law, but there obviously there are states that have passed it as being legal. So it's kind of a, does it really belong on the list? In some states, it's not illegal for medical purposes. And um, for some, it's not illegal as long as you're 21. And so that's kind of a debatable one because it really does have medical value. So this one may end up going off this list in the future. Um, but these are just some more examples of illegal drugs that would be considered a schedule one drug. And then schedule two, this is the last part here is controlled substances, meaning controlled means they are controlled by law. You either have to have a prescription, um, they fall under uh, the the Controlled Substances Act, where which was put in place, I believe, 
was it 1970? I forget now the year. And that's when they actually started saying, okay, we have to control the buying and selling and the quantities because these are all things that have addictive qualities. And so next week we'll break down in detail the four different um, types of control substances, stimulants, narcotics, depressants, and anabolic steroids. And I think, uh, yeah, we'll start with stimulants. So we'll just go into detail on these and um, that'll be kind of where we wrap up next week. So Next week, after we're done taking the notes, um, there'll be at the end of the week on Friday, a quiz. Um, it'll be similar to the test that we did. It'll be all on the notes that we did. And then we're just gonna move on to ballistics the following week. So we're gonna, don't think I'll do another big major test. Um, Cause I'm still finishing up grading your projects. I'm so sorry, I'm so behind on that, but I'll get those finished up this weekend. The projects y'all finished before spring break and get those grades in cause grades are due Wednesday of next week. And the tests that y'all took last Friday will go in and then I'll probably just do quizzes and I just haven't figured out what your final big grade might be for the end of the year. I'm still trying to figure that out. So, um, yeah, um, please, please pay attention to what is assigned. Get it done. Don't get zeros for just being lazy. You have all the time in the world to get this stuff done. Okay. Um, if you don't have things in this weekend, as I'm getting my grades up to date, I'm going to start calling parents and letting them know that you guys aren't getting your stuff done. And if there's anything I can do to help you, I understand everybody's under a lot of stress. There could be situations going on at your home that, that are making things even worse. And I don't want to make your schoolwork add to that pressure. So if I need to call a parent and just see, is there anything I can do to help? Is everything okay? Maybe they just assume you're getting it done because you're saying, I got it, mom, but you really don't. So I don't know. So if you don't want me to call your mom <laughs> and I do it because I would be worried, is everything okay at home? Um, are y'all doing okay with all of this? Um, anyway, I'm gonna stop rambling. Miss you guys and um, be looking for some information on Zoom calls next I think I'll probably do it next Wednesday afternoon before we quiz on Friday over everything um, that we've talked about for this uh, chapter. All right. Y'all have a awesome weekend. Get your work done and then just go have fun. See ya.